Okay, so about three months ago, we started an offer completely from scratch. I, I put two salespeople on the offer in that first month in July, we did $9,000 in sales. Fast forward to the end of September, we cleared $150,000 in sales with six closers on the team, okay? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how we took a sales team completely from scratch to about $150,000 a month in revenue, and I'm gonna be showing you the three biggest things that we did to make that happen. So the, the first thing that we trained the sales team on was how to properly position the unique mechanism of the offer. So let me let me give you a little bit of context on, on the offer itself and why this was relevant. So this is a this is a B to C uh, offer, right? We're, we're dealing with prospects who have a, maybe a little bit of experience with online business. Maybe they've been researching something online, uh, but they haven't really seen any massive results yet, right? And they're reaching out to us for, for guidance and, and support. Uh, the way that the offer is positioned, it's an alternative to everything that's already out there, right? It's an alternative to what people have been seeing for the last five years, right? It's new, it's different, it's exciting. And that's why there's a lot of interest with it. But at the same time, there's a lot of questions, right? Uh, the prospect doesn't fully understand exactly what it is in some cases. And for us to be able to close high ticket deals on the first call, uh, we have to be able to, to bridge that gap uh, and get them up to speed by educating our prospect and, and doing it effectively. The way that most people educate their prospects is they will go on a long winded spiel where they explain everything there is to know about their thing and then they end up getting into this long drawn out Q&A with their prospect. They lose all control and all authority and the prospect ends up just being more confused than they were before you got into that long drawn out explanation, right? So the, the way that we did this, first off, we got our sales guys going through all of the material, right? So we got them going through everything on the funnel, all of the VSLs, we got them watching YouTube videos uh, from the, the client that we're selling for. We got them just consuming all of the materials that they would actually have real industry expertise, right? Uh, after that, uh, on the sales calls, here's how we implemented it. Uh, so usually in the second phase of the conversation, after we figured out where our prospect wants to be, what's their goal, what's their vision, uh, we'll, we'll educate them not on the business model as a whole, right? Because that's the whole point of the, the program that we're offering them. But we'll give them just enough for them to understand it and most importantly is we're gonna educate them on the biggest problem that they're gonna face getting into this space, right? The, the objection that we were running into before we started implementing this was, I wanna think about it. How do I know that this model is gonna work for me? I just wanna go through some material before we actually do the coaching, right? It's, it's because there's a lack of clarity. It's because they don't know what they don't know, right? When an opportunity sounds too good to be true, people are naturally skeptical of that opportunity. So what we started doing is we would explain the biggest problem that they were going to face in accomplishing the goal that they just mentioned, right? So for example, right, hey, Mr. Prospect, the, the biggest problem that, that most people face as they're starting their online business is the fact that they don't know how to get traffic. They don't know how to get eyeballs to their thing, right? Most people put so much attention and focus on what they're selling or how they're selling it. When in reality, the, the main priority is how can you get as many eyeballs as possible to your thing, right? And, and then the next problem that you face, the way that most people get eyeballs to their thing is by spending thousands of dollars on advertising. And at the end of the day, if you're just getting started with this business, you probably aren't in a position where you can just blow and burn through thousands of dollars to get things started, right? So what we do is we use a strategy called organic marketing, where we use completely free content using TikTok and Instagram to generate tens of thousands of eyeballs to send to your store with absolutely zero marketing cost. Does that make sense? So the key here, Mr. Prospect, for you and getting to that goal that you mentioned a second ago is gonna be to master you know, how to create compelling organic content that not only brings in eyeballs, but also converts them. Does that make sense? Great, now, now let me ask you, because I understand that you're brand new to all of this, right? And you're not gonna figure it out overnight. Uh, let me ask you, are you at a place where you can commit, you know, two to three hours a day to go through content to, you know, apply the strat, blah, 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 right? So by implementing the small change, right, we were able to prevent the most common objection that we were getting. And this is how we went from $9,000 in July to about $39,000 in August. Okay, so the, the second thing that we implemented with the sales team was uh, specifically focusing on a challenge-based question. So it's actually the fifth step of our 10-step framework. 
Um, and in challenge-based questions, uh, essentially what we're doing is, you know, we're, we're figuring out what has stopped our prospect from taking action in the past, right? This is probably one of the most important steps in the call. This is where we prevent objections. This is where we create urgency. And this is really where we close our prospect is halfway through the conversation. Let me explain what it actually is. When we're in challenge-based questions, right, we're asking our prospect, hey, what's been stopping you from getting something started in the past? What's been stopping you from, from reaching your goal of being able to replace your nine to five already, right? Here's the thing, right? And, and this is what a lot of rookie salespeople get wrong is the prospect is always going to say, oh, well, I just didn't know how, or, oh, I just didn't have the time, or, you know, I didn't have the right support system before, things like this, right? And sure, these might be true, but almost always, especially in a B2C market, the biggest reason why somebody hasn't achieved their goals yet comes down to mindset, it comes down to effort, it comes down to urgency, and how seriously they took it, right? Like almost always, it's crazy. So um, here's, here's what we did with the sales team, and this is how we got like two or three sales guys on the contract. Like making this one change is what allowed them to like double or triple their commissions in this three month span, is implementing this one stage on the call, okay? Uh, so here's, here's exactly how we did it. Uh, first of all, once, once we figured out our prospect's goal, right? We found out their pains earlier on in the conversation. We figured out their goals. Uh, now that we're in, in challenge-based questions, right? The first thing that we want to do is establish a timeline. Like we want to figure out, okay, so when did our prospect first start thinking about getting something started? When did they first get the idea that, hey, I don't want to work this bullshit nine to five anymore. I want to build a business. I want to be an entrepreneur right? Was that a month ago? Was that two years ago? Was that five years ago? Right? Uh, a lot of the times this has been a thought that's been brewing in our prospect's mind for a long time. We want to figure out what that timeline is. So a question that I'll ask is, okay, so um, let me ask you, Mr. Prospect, like, like when did you first realize you wanted to, to do something online? Hey, wh wh when did you realize like you wanted to, to, you know, stop working that nine to five and do something way bigger? Right? Hey, how long have you been thinking of getting a business started? Right? A question like this, right? Okay, gotcha. It's been about a year. Okay, and like in that year, um, walk me through it. Like what steps have you taken to, to get the ball rolling? Tonality is really important there. Casual, chill, conversational, right? Um, you're not accusing anybody of being lazy. You're just asking them, what have you been up to? In this last year, like what have you tried? What, what have you had going on, right? Oh, you know, well, well, I've done some research on this. You know, I've looked into it X, Y, and Z, but like I don't really know where to start. Okay, gotcha. And like, w walk me through that. Like, what kind of research have you been doing? Oh, well, you know, I watched a few YouTube videos, like learning more about this. And okay, cool. And, and it's, it's been a year and, and you've, you've only watched a few YouTube videos. Has there been any other steps that you've taken to get something started? Oh, no. Well, I, I just don't really know where to start. H has there been anything stopping you from like taking that first step and, you know, even just putting together a, a simple online storefront? Right, and, and, and now by, by the first step is setting up that timeline. The next step is just collecting the data. What have they been doing in that timeline from the moment they realize they need to do something to right now, right? And then basically we're just collecting data, nonchalant, super casual. And then once we've collected some information, we wanna highlight the misalignment in their actions and their goals. Right. A second ago, like people love to say, oh, I want to make 10 grand, 20 grand, 100 grand a month. Right. People love to say, oh, I want to leave my nine to five, do all these amazing things. Right. Uh, it's very easy for them to say that and they can have those goals and that's awesome. But when we look at their actions that they've been doing for the last year, it's like, OK, well, you know, it seems like you've, you've watched some YouTube videos, but outside of that, haven't really done done anything else. Am I understanding correctly? OK. And like, do you feel like that? you know, your actions for the last year have been in alignment with that goal of, of, you know, leaving that nine to five and being able to make 20 grand a month? Or do you feel like you probably could have done a little bit more? Um, and then basically right there at the end is we're highlighting that lack of alignment with their actions and their, and their goals, right? Uh, the, the key there is that you, you we're, we're trying to create tension. Like this is an uncomfortable moment of the call. That's the whole point is to you know, basically challenge our prospect and show them, hey, like what you've been doing up until now hasn't been working, right? Um, and if you continue doing this, like you're not gonna get to the result that you want. And the last thing that I wanna do would be to bring you into my program and you know, you're going through some stuff but you're not really taking any action on this, right? 
um, that frame is gonna be really powerful. And when you introduce that tension, when you make it uncomfortable for your prospect, they have two options. They can either get totally self-accountable and say, you know what, you're right, I've been lazy, I haven't taken this as seriously as I should have, I need to make a change. Or they're gonna start, they're gonna continue making excuses and continue coming up with BS. And you know, if that's the case, then they weren't gonna buy anyways, right? But by challenging them right here, right, we, we bring in some tension, we challenge them to rise above it, this is gonna prevent like 90% of objections at the end of the call if you're good at it. I have other videos going deeper on this concept. This was the concept that, yeah, uh, exploded a couple guys' commissions and allowed us to, uh, to scale. Let me get into the third thing, okay? The third thing was, was KPI tracking, okay? Um, there's, there's two ways you can look at data, and that's qualitative and quantitative, right? Or, or, or rather, not, not data, there's two ways you can look at performance, right? You can look at the numbers, and you can look at what's actually happening on the calls, right? Those, those first two things were qualitative. What's happening on calls? Uh, what are we saying? What tonality are we using? What questions are we asking, right? But at the end of the day, uh, with an offer like this, uh, we're spending a lot of money on, on marketing. We're getting a lot of book calls. Um, and we're also, as of right now, as of this filming, I believe we have about six closers, six, seven closers on the offer actively selling, right? So there's a lot of data uh, that's, that's going up every day and analyzing that data is a huge part of scaling. So um, the numbers that, that we're tracking, right? For, for those of you on calls or for those of you training, whatever it is, uh, you gotta know your numbers if you wanna be a top performer, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a quote, what gets measured gets managed. If you wanna lose weight, you track your weight every single day, right? If you wanna make more money in sales, you track the things that are happening in your sales day every single day. So a couple things that we track. Um, number one, uh, obviously total sales from inbound calls. We track the amount of book calls. We track the show up rate for those book calls, the close rate, and the EPL, okay? Those are the inbound stats that we track. Uh, when it comes to outbound, we track outbound dials, outbound, so let's say you do you know, 100, 100 phone calls in a day, right? Those are dials. Uh, outbound conversations, right? So let's say you have 15 conversations out of that 100. Out of those conversations, you'll have, you know, we track offers. You might have five offers out of those 15. And out of those five offers, you close two deals, right? And then we track the ratio of the, the, the pairs of stats there, right? So the ratio between closed deals and offers, the ratio between offers and conversations, the ratio between conversations and dials, right? And, and you should track this on your own. The stuff is very easy to, to look at and create your own spreadsheet on. Um, this gives you a lot of clues. This allows you now to make data-driven decisions. So instead of going through your sales day blindly, instead of just going through the week and just trying harder, you can actually look at your numbers and make proper decisions, right? What you're looking for, first step is tracking those numbers, right? Once you set up the, the tracking for that, uh, now, now you can analyze it. So we have a, a spreadsheet uh, that tracks individual stats, that tracks the team-wide stats, uh, tracks it over a weekly period and a monthly period. Once you've, once you've set that up, what you're doing is you're looking for outliers, right? So you're looking for the, for the biggest, whether that's positive or negative, right? So for example, let's say we had a, a closer, and, and, and here's actually a perfect example. We had a closer who, who was getting about 50 book calls a week, uh, and his show up rate was significantly lower than the rest of the team. He was getting like a 54% show up rate, uh, meanwhile, there was another closer on the offer getting a 74% show up rate, right? So what we did is we looked at the closer who was getting the 74% show up rate. We looked at the exact things that he was doing before the call to get people to show up at that rate. We itemized it, like wrote down three actionables and then implemented it with the guy who had the, the weaker show up rate, right? Um, those three actionables, by the way, if you're looking to increase your show up rate, number one, um, one of the most effective things you can do, set up notifications where instantly when a booking comes in, you text them immediately, right away. If not, a call right away, right? Especially if they're booking two to three days out, those are, that's going to be the person that's, that's most likely not to show up, right? So we want to text them and call them the moment that the booking comes in. That, that's number one. Number two, you want to text them the morning of, whether they respond or not, right? Hey, just shooting you over a quick reminder for our call. We all set for X, Y, Z time. Okay, great, right? And, and the last thing that you can do is at the end of your day, for everybody who didn't show up or for anybody who rescheduled, you send them one more text, right? So three things, you text them instantly on the booking, you text them the morning of, 
And then at the end of your day, you text the people who didn't show up and the people who rescheduled, you just double confirm the next call with them. You do those three things, you're gonna be able to increase your show up rate and in this case we did, right? If there's a close rate issue, right? If, if, if we see, okay, there's one closer who has significantly lower close rate. If you, if you know that you're a closer on an offer and you have a lower close rate than other guys on your team. Let's say you, you take, just for simplicity's sake, right? Let's say you take 10 calls. Let's say out of those 10 calls, eight show up. Let's say out of those eight, two you closed. Okay, so two you closed, eight showed up, there's six people who you didn't close. Okay, cool. Let's say out of those six people that you did not close, three of them just weren't qualified, right? Like no chance, they, they, they didn't have the money, they weren't that serious, whatever, right? Cool, we're not gonna worry too much about those. The other three, right, they had the money. Let's say all three of those people, they had a, a belief problem. They didn't understand your industry. They gave an objection, like I mentioned earlier on in the conversation where, um, you know, they wanted to go through material before they took action and then they never reached back out to you, right? Okay, cool. So there are three missed opportunities every single day that you could be capitalizing on, but you're not, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to do everything that I spoke about in step one. You're going to learn your model more. You're going to go through more material. You're going to understand what it is that you're selling. You're going to understand how to communicate it more. And you're going to implement one specific actionable to prevent that objection that you see coming in over and over again. Okay. That's the cheat code is when you look at your numbers, you see, okay, there's three missed opportunities a day. The most common objection I'm getting is I just want to go through the course first because I don't understand the business model. Great. Next week on every single call, I'm going to give an explanation of the business model. I'm going to educate my prospect on the problem. I'm going to ask them if it makes sense. I'm going to gain a commitment and say, Hey, does that all make sense? Great. Do you feel like you're at a place where you're ready to start taking some action on this? Or do you feel like you're still in a research mode? I'm going to implement those exact things. Great. Now maybe two out of those three people moving forward are going to be closed, right? That's how you increase your, your close rate. You got to get tactical with it. So those are just two examples of, of, of numbers to be looking at, right? But uh, by tracking all the numbers first, we can find outliers. By looking at those outliers, now we can take, take steps to improve that. Let's say you have a, let's say your show up rate, you know, uh, let's say you're, you're at a 50% show up rate, okay? Uh, you're at five out of 10 people show up for their calls. Let's say you have an EPL, an earnings per lead of 250, right? So for all of your sales divided by the total number of book calls, your earnings per lead is $250, right? Uh, if you have a 50% show up rate, if you figure out how to get two more people to show up, you make an extra $500 in sales, just like that, right? Um, so yeah, it's important to look at your numbers. For a long time as a closer, I didn't do this, uh, but now it's just standard across uh, all offers. And, and it's a big part of why we're able to scale this offer so quickly is because we can look at numbers, we can see changes very quickly and we can make very fast adjustments. Those are the three biggest changes that, that I made here, guys. Uh, they might seem simple, uh, they might seem complicated to you, I don't know, let me know down below. But three very specific changes that we made uh, and we plan on scaling this offer a lot further. Um, and it's all built on, on the base of KPIs, it's all built on the base of you know analyzing calls and, and making constant day-to-day -day adjustments and that's what greatness comes down to in sales, right? A lot of people just kind of go with the flow. They go through the motions. They try harder. They hope that they're going to close more deals. They hope that the leads get better. Uh, but that's complete nonsense. Uh, you got to get really intentional with what you're doing day to day. Uh, and if you can do that, you're going to smoke your competition. Okay. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Drop a comment down below with your biggest takeaway from this video. And uh, let's crush it, guys. Peace.